welcome to the modern worship service at First United Methodist Church, Richardson. There were no exceptions to who Christ loved, and there should be no exception to who we love in the world with Christ as our example. Hey, we are so glad to be worshiping with you today. My name is Eric Chukowski, and this is Val. And as we get started today, we want to invite you to just text two or three people. Let them know that you're thinking of them, that the peace of God is with them this day as we welcome the band to lead us in worship and surrender ourselves to God. Let's sing together.
Amen. We lift up this service as an offering to God and pray that the Holy Spirit is active, moving, and touching us as we participate in worship this day. Welcome to Modern Worship at First United Methodist Church Richardson, where we welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ. I'm Paviel Jenkins, one of the associate pastors, and I'm grateful that you are joining us. We want to remain connected during this time while many of us are continuing to worship online. So I invite you to take a moment and register your attendance by going to fumcr.com slash check-in. We're also missing seeing your faces. So I encourage you to take a picture of yourself as you participate in worship, post that on social media and tag the church. Now let us continue in worship by affirming our faith and reciting the Apostles' Creed. Members of our Fall 2020 Leadership First Class are leading us in the Apostles' Creed. Let us join our voices together as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, on the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the, the communion of saints, saints, the forgiveness of sins, the, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, I'm Natalie Nedovich, Associate Children's Director, and I want to take a moment to invite all of the children in the room to freeze whatever you're doing, and then lift your arms up high and fly straight to the center of the room. Are you ready, set, go! Oh, it's so good to see each one of you this morning. Now, you might be wondering why I've decided to wear a cape to church today. Well, did you know that God gives each one of us a superhero gift? He does. So have you ever met somebody that just loves to teach? They're really good at it. They make it interesting. They always have answers to your questions and sometimes even know the question you're going to ask before you ask it. Well, that person's gift is teaching. Have you ever met somebody that always does a great job at encouraging you? They're always cheering you on, hoping that you do your very best. That person's gift is an encourager. What about the person that is always kind to everyone they meet? That person might be asking you to play on the playground or inviting you to sit with them at lunch. There might be somebody that is helping others in need. That person's gift is kindness. So God gives each one of us special superhero gifts. Sometimes we don't even know what our gifts are yet, but they are developing inside of us. So this week, as you go throughout the week, I want you to try and find what is your superhero gift. Help your brother and your sister or your mom and your dad find their superhero gift as well. And then see how can you use your gift from God to help others around you. Did you know that we all have different gifts and that's what makes us beautiful. We need all of the gifts in the world to make the world a better place. So before we end, will you say a superhero prayer with me? Bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for giving me my superhero gift. Help me to find it and to use it to help others around me to know the love of you. It's in your name we pray, amen. As we go into our time of offering, we invite you to give. Opportunities to give online or by texting to give are located on the screens. And enjoy the voices of our beautiful Journey Youth Choir. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Max LaJoy. Our scripture today is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 and 9 through 21. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let love be genuine Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice for those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, 
live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Max, for reading our scripture today. My name is Josh Fitzpatrick, and I'm the lead pastor of our modern worship service here at First United Methodist Church Richardson. And as always, I just want to thank you for joining us for this worship service here as we continue to navigate life during a global pandemic. I want to thank you for your continued support of what God is doing here through the people and the church of First United Methodist Church Richardson. It is a different time to be the church, but man, it just continues to prove to be so fruitful and, and enriching in different ways, doesn't it? One of those ways is in the middle of this sermon series. We're in a sermon series called Dear Church. If you haven't been able to join us for the past several weeks, this is a sermon series diving into the book of Romans, or this is Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And I don't know about you, but I've been loving this. I've been loving diving into scripture and going deeper into several different chapters. This morning, we're gonna uh, cover chapter 12, as we just heard read. And it's been, it's been so enjoyable from a pastoral perspective to be able to walk through this together as, as a church. And so we've been pairing the sermon series with the weekly all-church Bible study on Wednesday evenings. And it's been really neat to get the feedback and the conversation and And again, just kind of wrestle with these texts together. And there's just something about the book of Romans. Not only does it set the foundations of our faith, which is what we're talking about, but it just, it draws you in. It it draws you into the narrative and there's just so much depth to it. And there's something about it that that I've just enjoyed kind of the escape of it, of just diving into scripture and and allowing scripture to, to kind of just take me away from everything else. I don't know if you've experienced that. It, that sometimes when you read scripture, it's, it's nice to just escape from the rest of the 24-hour news cycle or the busyness of life. And, and yet, as soon as I say that, I also want to question that thought because I'm not sure that that's what scripture is for. I'm not sure that, that my human tendency to want to, to escape from the challenges of life through the reading of scripture is, is really what scripture is intended to do. I think instead, when we read passages like, like Romans 12, we're actually reminded that, that Scripture draws us to the world instead of away from it. We'll, we'll tackle that a little bit this morning and we'll, we'll wrestle with what that means exactly, but I, I'm reminded of something that our youngest child used to do. So Liam, he's going to turn three next month. He stopped doing this, but it was so cute when he used to. Just, just recently, really, every time he'd get in trouble, he would try to hide. And he, he wouldn't really go anywhere. He would just close his eyes and, and think that he was escaping the situation. And so we'd say something, for example, like, like Liam, he's sitting there feeding the dog human food off of the table. And we'd say, Liam, and instead of doing anything, he'd, just, he'd close his eyes really tight as if that would just suddenly make him disappear from the room. And, and as funny as it is to picture that, and we would crack up every time he would do it. The reality is, I think we do the same thing. Have you ever had that feeling of just wanting to escape from the situation in which you were in? Whatever it is, maybe you were, you were opening a, a bill and it was way bigger than you thought it would be and you just wanna close your eyes and escape it and hope that by the time you open your eyes that that number that you owe is somehow miraculously less than what it initially said or whatever the situation is. You and I both have this human tendency. It's it's fight or flight. It's the flight part. We want to just run away from our problems, don't we? And so we've we have this this human nature to want to just escape, to just close our eyes and get away from whatever it is we're in the middle of. Now it was no different for the church in Rome, that as they went through persecutions and they went through the challenges of life and the challenges of being the early church, the very first Christian body in, this, in the first century, there were times when those who were a part of that church in Rome, as well as the other churches around the area, they, they wanted to just escape. And we see evidence of this throughout scripture. 
as scripture encourages those early churches to not escape, but to recognize their calling to be in the world. So before we dive into Romans 12, I'm gonna set some more context and go back to John chapter 17 from Jesus himself as Jesus is praying for his disciples. This is right before Jesus is betrayed and arrested and led to the cross. Jesus prays for his disciples and he's pouring out his heart as he prays for those who are closest to him and who have been following him over the course of his, his ministry. And he says in verse 14, it's a, it's a verse that is most often focused on when we hear these words, this prayer from Jesus. Verse 14 says that I have given them your word. Remember, he's praying to, to his heavenly father, to God the creator. He says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. So you may have seen this verse and this idea of being not of the world on a, on a bumper sticker or a t-shirt. There was a popular movement a few years ago and it's still, you see it today, sometimes on the back of a car, there's the N-O-T-W, not of this world. That's kind of this like Christian badge, if you will, that you can, you can paste wherever you want. It's this idea, this reminder coming from John 17, 14 and, and later uh, John 17, 16, that we as disciples of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus, as members of the family of God, technically are now members of something much larger than this world. We are not of this world. And so you will see that language pasted all over sometimes in, in pop culture, of pop Christianity, if you will. But what happens is when we focus so much on verse 14 that says we are not of this world, we miss out on the rest of Jesus's prayer in John chapter 17. For example, verse 11, which says, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And then down in verse 15, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. And then verse 18, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. So when we focus on just verse 14 and we have this idea that we are not of this world, we give in to this sense of what we might call escapism. This idea that maybe because our allegiance is to something much bigger than the powers of this world that we can just close our eyes and escape it all. And yet if we pay attention to the rest of Jesus' prayer, we see this distinction made that yes, although our, our membership is to something much larger than this world, we still have a calling and a mission, and a purpose. There's a reason that we are still in this world, and it's not just a coincidence. It's because Jesus sends us into this world. And so we have this kind of, this tension of having challenges in this life and wanting to escape those challenges and being encouraged by this, the truth that we are not of this world, and yet the tension is paired with the other side of the coin that says, for some reason, you are still here. For some purpose, you are still in this world. And so we ask, well then, what does that mean? What do I do with that? And that's where a letter like Paul's letter to the church in Rome comes in handy. As Paul looks at these early disciples and says, okay, this is how to live your life in the world, but not of the world. Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, as we just heard read, say, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So Paul says, how do you live in this world without living of the world? Well, for one, you continue to pursue this idea of no longer conforming to the world. For the first 11 chapters leading up to this one, Paul has gone over and over about our opportunity that we have through the grace of Jesus Christ to leave our former lives behind and to step into the newness of life for which God has designed us all along. And yet, we still have this tension to remain in our former lives, don't we? 
Paul says, don't conform. You don't need to live life by the world's rules, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your minds. If you recall a couple of weeks ago, as we were talking about what salvation is, we, says that it, we said that it starts with faith, that we are empowered by the grace of God. It always starts with God, but it's like this offer that is given to us and our response is through faith. And when we believe the good news of Jesus Christ, when it takes place up here, then it begins to change the way we act. You remember the, the cowboy outfit, that was that sermon. When we believe the good news of Jesus Christ, it begins to change the way we act. This is also what we refer to as the process of sanctification. That although it starts with faith, it then becomes a part of everything we do so that our lives can no longer conform to the world, but our minds are transformed so that we can experience the salvation of God here and now. And when we do, our entire lives become an act of worship. I love, love, love this line, particularly in today's chapter in life, that we have an opportunity to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is our spiritual act of worship. And so in a chapter like these days, when we are tempted to say, man, I can't wait to get back to worship. We've gone seven months without meeting together for live in-person worship, except for these, these past two Sundays, which have been our first two Sundays to gather live together. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit. But we've had this, this hiatus, and we're, we're tempted to say, oh, I can't wait to return to worship. And the reality is, worship has never ended. Although we have not been able to meet in this worship space physically together, we do ourselves such a disservice when we limit our minds to thinking about worship only taking place one hour at a time on a Sunday. And I'm not referring to your opportunity to watch and experience these worship services on demand, although you can do that. What I'm referring to is this idea that our lives become our act of worship. That if you want to learn how to live in the world but not of the world, it's through the way we live our lives. So then he gets down to verses nine through 21 where he just expands on this. How do we then live lives of worship? And the bottom line is we live lives that are different from the world around us not conformed to the world, but are distinct because of the grace of God to transform us. And I'm just gonna kind of fly through this because you've already heard it, but man, it is so good. So this is verses nine through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love, enough, love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Not, don't fight for the top, but outdo each other. Would you serve one another? Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. He goes on. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Wait, what? Okay, this is where it begins to really begin to, see, to be difficult. This is countercultural stuff. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Ooh, man, this is getting good. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. You remember when we talked about the wages of sin is death, that so often there are natural consequences to the poor decisions we make. We don't have to take vengeance into our own hands. Sometimes, and most of the time, the punishment is already there. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Line after line after line, we are giving these instructions from Paul on how to live in the world as Christians, as disciples of Christ, and yet live in such a way that those who are watching will take note. Live in such a way that those who are watching will say, oh, those people are different. Those people are different. This is what it means to not be of the world, 
but to remain committed to our calling to be here, to be present, to not give up on this, but to witness to the love and grace of our creator in and through the ways that we simply live our lives different than the world around us. By serving, by loving, by sacrificing, and by serving, loving, and sacrificing not just those people you are close to, but even our enemies. It's the reason we have put so much effort into sustaining this this year of service that you see these shirts, you've seen them over and over. We think it's so vitally important to the Christian journey to serve those around us that we've committed an entire year, and, and not just a year, but a year to emphasize that our whole lives should be committed to serving others. We have an opportunity, church, to live lives that are different. In the midst of an election, You and I have an opportunity to witness to the love and grace and character of our God by the ways that we conduct ourselves, by loving our enemies. What does that look like? What does it look like in social media to respond to those with whom we disagree with love and grace and respect? When we do, the world takes note because it's not normal. Our human tendency is to lash out and to argue and to fight back and yet there is a distinct difference in the way that God calls us to engage with our brothers and sisters with whom we disagree, isn't there? We have a golden opportunity right now to offer our lives as living sacrifices so that others might take note of what it is we do and how we do it differently. And so I go back to my original question. As Paul writes to us, about how to live in the world, as Jesus prays for his disciples to not be of the world, but to be in the world, how often do we just want to close our eyes and escape it all? And yet that's not what God calls us to do, is it? As much as we want to just close our eyes and remove ourselves from the challenges of this life, God looks at us and says, I have you there for a reason. I have sent you into this world. It is no coincidence or accident that you are still where you are. And so my prayer for each one of us today is that we would open our eyes to the ways that God is calling us to live our lives as living sacrifices, as as people who live distinctly in this world, here and today, no matter what we're going through. And it's also my prayer that God would then give us the courage to step into that calling. Is it going to be easy? No, not necessarily, because what this means then, if we're doing it right, is that we're gonna be swimming upstream, is that we're going to be living lives that are countercultural that are against what our friends and neighbors and community are telling us we should be doing because we're not living life by the world's rules, but we're living life by God's. And yet, when we do, our entire lives become an act of worship. And friends, let me tell you, there is no greater calling and no greater honor than to worship God with your life than to allow God to love those around you by using you. Amen? Amen. Now let's join our voices together as we sing this last song. Thank you, Pastor Josh. Part of being a living sacrifice is really learning how to love the way that Christ loves. And that's oftentimes through our words and through our actions. And so we want to close today with a song that really acknowledges that truth. Would you sing with us? With kindness and compassion for the one
increase my love help me to love with open arms like you do a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth oh that when they look in my eyes they would see you even in just a smile they would feel the father's love oh how you love us from the homeless to the famous and in between you formed us you made us carefully cause in the end we're all your children What an awesome song. I love that line, when they look in my eyes, that they would see you. That's what this is about. When we live lives that are distinct from the world, even our enemies will look at our eyes and see the love of Jesus Christ. Hey, thanks again for worshiping with us today. As always, I want to extend the invitation for you to email me personally, josh at fumcr.com. If you have any questions about what you've experienced in today's worship service, if you have questions about the church, about what we believe or why we do what we do, or if you are interested in joining our church, I would invite you to, to send me an email. I wanna make you aware of a, an awesome event that is taking place this next Sunday. On the 25th is our first attempt at the Fall Festival Family Fun Fest. It's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna take the place of our annual trunk or treat since we can't really do a trunk or treat very safely with kids going from trunk to trunk to trunk. We are each going to be in our own little party spots and the party's going to make the rounds to everybody's stationary spot. It's a, gonna be a ton of fun. There's more information at fumcr.com slash funfest. You can go there to make sure that you register to get your spot uh, before they all fill up. Uh, you will not want to miss that. 
And again, I just want to reiterate the invitation for you to join us live in person. Now we are hosting in-person services here at the church. We recognize that most of our congregation is going to continue to, to worship online during these times. And so we will continue to create online worship services just like this one you've just watched. But if you are comfortable doing so, you can register to attend in-person worship here at the church on nine, at 945 in the Worship and Arts Center where I'm preaching from right now um, every Sunday. And so for more information on that, I want to invite you to just hang out after the service for about 30 seconds and you'll see a short little video that will explain what that is going to look like even more. That said, would you receive this benediction? May the God who created you and knows you better than you know yourself remind you of your sacred worth as a child of God. May God open your eyes to the ways all around you in which you might bear witness to the love of God in this world. May God give you courage to live differently than the world so that the world might know Jesus Christ through your life, through your living sacrifice, through your act of worship. Amen, amen. Have a great, great week and go in peace. The time is now. Come church arise. Love with his hands. See with his eyes. Bind it around you. Let it never leave you. And they will know us by I'm Javiel, one of the associate pastors here at First United Methodist Church Richardson. We're delighted to be returning to in-person worship in a limited capacity this October. During this first phase, I invite you to visit our website for more information and to register if you plan on joining us. This is very important so our staff can plan accordingly. Once you've registered, I wanted to show you a little bit more about what to expect when you arrive on Sunday. During registration, you're asked to choose a color. This helps us know what service you're planning to attend that morning. Make sure to remember that color, and as you drive into campus, you will look for the flags like this in the parking lot and entrances. For example, if your color is blue, you'll look to find a parking spot close to this flag and the same color as you enter the building. We ask for you to put on your mask covering both your nose and mouth before entering the building. If you don't have a mask or face covering, please let us know and we're happy to provide you with one. Our staff will greet you as you arrive. While we love handshakes and hugs, during this season, we'd appreciate your waves and distant high fives. As you arrive to the sanctuary, our staff ushers will be available to escort you to your seat. You may notice several of our pews are marked off to serve as a visual reminder to allow space between family units when being seated. You will see small tape markings that will allow you to leave three or more spots between families. You may also notice that this is a touch-free service, meaning many of the elements you're used to seeing in the pews or passing to others have been removed. If you'd like, we invite you to register your attendance and view the bulletin online from your phone. Our offering baskets will be placed at the exit doors as you leave. At the conclusion of service, please listen for dismissal instructions from our staff. While we certainly miss seeing one another, we encourage you not to gather in groups indoors after worship. If you're joining us in the Worship and Arts Center, you'll notice our floor seating has been separated into pods. Many of our rows have been marked off as a visual reminder to allow for at least three seats between family units to maintain and honor physical distancing. Our prey ground has been temporarily removed, so children are invited to sit with their families. Just like in the traditional service, we encourage you to watch for dismissal instructions at the end of service. As we return to limited in-person worship services, 
We know that many of you will choose to continue to worship with us online, and some of you will go back and forth between in-person and virtual. However you choose to worship with us, we worship as one body united in Christ and continue to live out our mission to welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ in our communities and the world.